maybe we talk about exercise first because that we know a lot about and it's it's your gold standard and then the question is do, could you take nutraceuticals to enhance the benefits of exercise and or if you don't want to exercise would they do anything so okay. uh, what do we know we know for sure that uh, people who uh, chronically exercise have better mitochondria reflected in a higher vo2 uh, higher mitochondria we and others have shown that that's uh, you know uh, present in heart in um, in muscle uh, and our you know study in 2015 in skin as well. So uh, long term endurance exercise, which is really uh, three times a week minimum, you know 30 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity, is going to confer significant benefits to your mitochondria. Now you uh, mentioned Marty Gavala earlier, one of my uh, good friends and colleagues. Uh, we did a lot of uh, work, or at least we did the mitochondrial work uh, uh, when he was doing this high intensity stuff. And the high intensity exercise gives at least at the cellular level, many of the benefits. But of course, this is a newer form of exercise. So most of our epidemiology and our studies are based on what people have done for 40, 50 years, and that is moderate intensity, continuous endurance exercise. And we know that's where all the epidemiology benefits and all of our work on mitochondria were in that group. In the high intensity, it is likely uh, that people over a long period of time are going to get the same benefits, but we have only started doing that type of activity in the last five to 10 years. So we don't really know the 30, 40 year benefits of that, but it probably is similar. Now, what's interesting from an exercise perspective with older adults uh, is weight training. And uh, my, uh, my first grad student, Johnny Parisi, um, who uh, did some work with us, uh, where we had older adults who were over 65 and they had not done regular exercise, but we put them through a weight training program. Uh, the first study we did was uh, three months of resistance training three times a week in the gym. And what we found, which was interesting, is an increase in mitochondria. Now, traditionally, people have always felt that weight training doesn't improve your mitochondria. It increases your muscle uh, size, your muscle strength. Uh, but the relative increase in mitochondria is just not there in young people. So people were surprised, as we were, that there was such a robust increase in mitochondria with weight training. Now, what probably happens is, number one, these people are fairly sedentary and they hadn't done much. So they'd accumulated damage for 65 years. By doing the weight training, they put their body through a physiologic stress. And, you know, my pruning of the tree hypothesis, they probably cleaned up a lot of the dysfunctional mitochondria. Uh, that's one. Number two, um, uh, Doug Turnbull, um, uh, Tanya Tavasalo, and others in mitochondrial disease patients found that the stem cells, the, uh, the satellite cells in our muscle, which are relatively quiescent, don't accumulate the same degree of mitochondrial damage as we age. And we also in patients don't see the, uh, the damage in the satellite cells. So what happens with weight training, as you know, when you get the damage, we activate satellite cells, they come in and shift in or bring in their new relatively undamaged mitochondria. And that's called the mitochondrial DNA shifting theory, uh, shown well in these CPO patients, but uh, work with Johnny Parisi in my lab and others have shown that uh, that actually happens with aging. So we think that's why the weight training is helpful to your mitochondria in older adults. But I think more importantly, uh, especially myself now over the age of 60, uh, I raced internationally in endurance sports for, for uh, many years when I was younger, um, still trained seven days a week, but I was finding, you know, I was losing muscle mass and still getting skinny. So I've started incorporating weight training as we've done in, in many of our studies to show that really for older adults, strength loss is a big factor and uh, the weight training is the best way to increase strength. Even the famous Bank Saltine showed that top marathon runners uh, really had uh, a leg weakness that was no different than the sedentary population over the age of 65. And so therefore we strongly encourage older adults to do some weight training with their endurance. So you improve your mitochondria, but also keep that muscle strength up. Uh, so yes, exercise is by far the best way to, I, I guess, maintain your, your mitochondria. If we wanted to do it nutritionally, um, so you, you have a kind of nutraceutical approach that looks at the multiple pathways. So right. if we could start from the strategy, what, what, what pathways is it that you're trying to modulate? Yeah, so uh, what we uh, hypothesized uh, in 2001 uh, is that to treat neurologic disorders or mitochondrial disorders, um, uh, so many pharma companies are trying to identify a single pathway, a single molecule, and that's been the pharma sort of um, model for 50 years. 
Um, but, and they say exercise is dirty, you know, we don't want to study it. It's, it's a dirty, uh, it's a dirty science. Uh, and the reason why it works is because it's dirty. And what I mean by that is that it's not just one thing that's beneficially affected by exercise, lower inflammation, lower oxidative stress, increased muscle strength, increased mitochondria. So what we said is, uh, in our hypothesis, we should treat the final common pathways of neurologic disease, aging, you know, mitochondrial disease, really, they're all the same oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation. And so by using a multi-ingredient nutritional supplement approach to target not just oxidative stress or you know, uh, improved energy efficiency by giving creatine, for example, but if we combined supplements strategically uh, and also combine supplements that were not just sitting out in the cytosol when the problem's going on in the mitochondria, but rather things that we knew get into the mitochondria, we could come up with better supplemental strategies. So in 2007, we took this approach in patients with genetic mitochondrial disease. And whenever I say that, really, it, it should apply to aging because at the cell level, they're the same. So what we did is we used creatine monohydrate which many studies have shown increases your sort of rest and exercise transition, that higher intensity sort of power output in the cytosol. It also has some neuroprotective effects and antioxidant benefits. We then uh, tried to protect the membranes, both the uh, outer cell membrane and the mitochondria with vitamin E, which is a chain-breaking chain antioxidant. And then to get into the mitochondria, a lot of people say, oh, use vitamin E and vitamin C, but you know they don't necessarily, well, they don't go into the mitochondria, so we used alpha lipoic acid, which is key in things like you know PDH, um, branch chain uh, ketoacid dehydrogenase, potent mitochondrial antioxidant with coenzyme Q10. And coenzyme Q10 is a molecule that accepts the electrons from complex one and complex two, and it can provide antioxidant benefits. The important issue too is that most failures of single antioxidants is that any antioxidant can become a pro-oxidant. So you need these, what we call redox couples. So that's why we had CoQ10 and lipoic acid in our mix. So we uh, went ahead and did a randomized double-blind crossover study and showed lower oxidative stress with two outcomes and lower lactate. So lactate in the blood is a, if it's higher, it's a reflection of the mitochondria not working in, in, to a first approximation. And certainly in our patients, it was, and we showed lower lactate and lower oxidative stress. Now we got criticized and, you know, the pharma people said, oh my God, you know, there's four ingredients here. This is so dumb. Um, so, um, you know, I tried to prove everyone wrong with my own personal money because nobody funded either of these studies. And we did a study with super high dose coenzyme Q10, which is what everyone was using at the time to treat mitochondrial patients. And what did we find? Nothing. No reduction in oxidative stress no reduction in lactate in 30 genetically confirmed patients in a randomized trial. So my point there was to target these complex um, uh, processes which are going on with aging and going on in our mitochondrial patients, we need to think about where the problem is to come up with safe ingredients uh, that are logically targeting more than one of the final common pathways. And, uh, and so that's generally been our approach. Now we've, we've taken that approach to obesity, We've taken that approach to aging. We've taken that approach to skin health. We've taken that approach to uh, infertility. And um, what was the final one? Radiation damage as well. And uh, essentially all of them have been successful by taking a multi-ingredient approach to target the mitochondria, but also to add different ingredients depending on what the clinical indication was. Uh, but we have uh, studies in mice and with obesity and aging in humans showing the benefits of, of this approach, especially with obesity. Uh, we've got a really nice uh, clinical trial showing that this, uh, this approach worked well.